There we go. Oh, there we go. Now it's done. Hey, Shaggy SoCal 12 for Forza and second track guide uh, for week three uh, in this series in the Cadillac V series R for Thursday Night Thunder. Uh, we are at Maple Valley and in this one, you know, Maple Valley is a high commitment track to begin with, but then you mix in a high downforce prototype and it's, it's going to be, well, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's actually a very fast lap. For a three mile course um and then certainly well you know we all know the last turn at maple valley um but this is also actually the first race where we get to try the new pit lane so uh that's a good thing all right so we'll, again we'll do the same thing i'll just go around a couple run a couple of laps uh, medium tires half fuel um then i'll do a, like a kind of a, a slow track walk just kind of point out things i'm looking for what i think will work um yeah kind of at least what i'm trying to do again my way is not always the best way but you know, I, the lap times seem to suggest I'm doing something right. But, uh, and then, because I need to practice, I'll run a, a mock race against the AI um, just to kind of get some traffic situations and just, you know, find trouble spots. But uh, let's get into it here. Uh, as far as setup recommendations, um, you know, I mean, I'll share, the, I'll share the setups I'm running. But again, it's like I just go through whatever the default setup is that Forza Tune Pro gives and figure that's that's good enough for what I need it to do and I can work with the rest. I do spend a little time on the gearing, um, but uh, at least for what Forza Tune Pro recommends, it, it wasn't recommending full downforce. It was like, I'd say like 75%, 75-80%, which is surprising considered that they wanted full downforce for her spa. So I don't know. Um, but with that, uh, let's go out and run some laps here and see what we get. Let's go ahead and start race. Seventh gear, gonna break just past the wall. On the left side, probably a little too much braking. Fifth gear, okay. Once you get into the corner, I'm just going to balance it, make a fine tuning adjustment to the throttle on the front end versus trying to dial in more steering. It'll save a little tire wear and uh, it's always a good thing. Start to turn into the green tree. It's usually, I like, I, at least Initially, I always take that a little bit wider. And this one, I always dime into a little bit more. And that's I'll, I'll blame the AI off the uh, the AI uh, driving the on the neck. But that's usually the line I have to take to get around. Them. Just a lift of the throttle, put it back in, and keep it on the left side. Let the gravity do the work for you. Down to fifth. Same thing here. Long right hander. Just you know, modulate. You know, adjust the front end with the throttle. Use a lot more curving through here. Little confidence lift. Down the seventh gear, and then here, pucker up. You can do it flat. You've got enough downforce in the car, you can do it flat. Brush of the brake, roll back in. Oh, that's way late in the brakes. Just a kiss. And be very careful coming back onto the track. Even with traction control, it's, it's possible to spin the car out because you lose grip at the rear. Even on mediums. 
All right, so let's do the track walk here. So what I'm typically looking for, breaking for turn one here, is is pretty much, you know, if you if you have to look at something coming down the front straight, you're going to see the last the last uh, blue signage here on the left side. It's also just past that. You'll see the uh, the the arm code of the wall there. It kind of then starts to move out to the left into the grass area. So, you know, for me, for how I break, as soon as I kind of get to here, it's also it's easier to see the wall kind of move away from the track than to spot the curving. Um, if you can't if you can't see the braking line, um, but then the line that I'm taking in for the braking is is I do tend to diamond this corner. Actually, I think I was following Matt, and he really diamonded it, and it was a very severe move to the to the inside but um ideally what i'll be doing is i'll get to this point it's going to be breaking seventh gear down to fifth but i'm going to i'm going to break straight line to the inside so if you're following it's going to look like when i hit the braking the car's just going to go you know across the track but it is break 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 in into the you know into the inside as best you can down to fifth gear fourth if you really have to um and then as i was saying this is you know, Maple Valley, I, mean, I would say like Hakone, Hakone's uh, turn one. There's that very long right-hander. It's, you know, it's got a little more elevation change in it. But, you know, Maple Valley, we've got this really long right-hand sweeper. You don't have, there's really no banking to help you. It's a little bit flat. There might even be a little bit of crown on the road. Um, so there are, you have multiple lines in there. And what I was trying to, 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 to say earlier on, on the hot laps is you know, at least how I drive. Kind of once I get in there and I kind of set how much steering I have, I'm really not, if the car starts to push, I'm really not gonna try and wrench much more steering into it because it scrubs the front tires. Um, so you get you get increased tire wear. It also puts the car in a position that because you put so much more steering in, once the tires grip up, if you don't start to unwind the wheel in time, the car's gonna lunge. Um, so you wanna watch out for that. So for me, kind of once I get the steering wheel set, it's easier for me to just, you know, use some maintenance throttle and just kind of a little off on a little bit, roll and roll out, just to find that balance to, to you know, to make that fine steering adjustment. If the car starts to push a little bit, you just back off the throttle a little bit, the tires regrip up and I'm, you know, and it stops moving. So you can get, I guess the short answer is, is you can you can fine tune easier by leaving, the, you know, just leaving your steering pretty much set and fine tune the steering, you know, as far as what the car, the front of the car is doing, with the throttle. So that would be that would be my recommendation for for these, you know, for the first of the two really long right hand sweepers. But ultimately, you know, fourth gear roll up to fifth, probably about the time where, you know, you kind of see where the pit exit here is. Probably about the time where you stop seeing. And again, I'm going up. I have no idea where I remember where the where the braking line ends. But usually, about when you're about halfway into the corner, and you're, you know, you know, I, I don't have a particular uh, thing I look for. But there'll be a point about halfway through, you know, even on the track map, where you're going to be able to really commit back to full throttle, and then it's just that subtle adjustment off, off full throttle to keep the front end in check. But ultimately, what I'm trying to do then is I'm. I'm not going to cross over pit exit line. It's actually a good habit not to get in, you know, to to get into, is to not use the pit exit cross over there, especially because if you're in the habit of doing that, and then somebody's coming out from pit lane during the race, you know, you might you don't want to clobber them. But ultimately, what I'm trying to do then is, you know, where the timing line ends, you know, where this timing section is, is I want to bring the car to the right side. Uh, probably still fifth gear. I'm not sure if I'm in sixth gear. I don't remember my short-term memories uh, kaput. But ultimately, turning in for this next corner, it is kind of blind. Um, it's a little bit of a brush break. Just a little bit of a brush break. Again, you're just trying to get a little weight to the front of the car. Turn the car in. And this is another, you know, double apex sweeper. So you'll apex here first. Probably a little bit of maintenance throttle. About when you get into the flat, you can really commit back full throttle and just almost hold the same arc out the exit. So it picks there a little bit. If you think the car is going to push out early, just back the throttle off a little bit. The car, the you know, the front will start to then turn and you roll right back into it. So it is really about a lot of these corners is just about throttle balance uh, to help steer the car through the corner. Coming down the short, you know, I don't want to, I don't know if this is the, really the back stretch, but uh, 
on the stretch heading towards the covered bridge. Um, as far as the kink here, because it is cresting a hill and it goes to the left, it's kind of it's kind of a blind entry. So what I've kind of spot is as you're as you're racing down the back stretch here, you know we've got the, you know the beautifully you know the beautiful fall colored tree as well. I can use that to my advantage. The first green tree here on the left hand side, it's also just kind of correlates with a couple of the, you can see the couple of the road patches there. If I'm on the right side as I'm getting here, as I get to this tree, I'm going to start to arc the car. I'm going to just subtly start to turn it in towards the red tree there, you know, just over the crest of the hill. If I do it right, it should put you right on line to pass under the red tree as you head to the bridge. And again, this is no longer a covered bridge, it's now an iron bridge. So I'll bring it out on the left side. Now the braking here, I am using the braking line, uh, relying on that, because there really isn't, I haven't, I haven't, uh, pardon me, I haven't found the tree I like yet. So I can probably use one of the trees uh, to help with that, though I'm sure if we're racing in the night, we're not gonna see much of anything, so. Now one of my, uh, one of my issues is my braking for this particular corner. I tend to, again, my, my habit, especially as I'm getting up to speed, is I'll brake in the straight line and then turn in late and kind of square the exit up. Um, and that seems to me, I kind of prefer that line here. The problem is, is that the way the, the way the course is now, it does kink to the left a little bit before you're done braking. And if I'm not positioned, you know, I, I need to give myself a little more wiggle room on the right side or else I'm on the brake, 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 and all of a sudden I've run out of road and I'm off on the right side. So it's something I'm still, you know, first couple of laps I'll probably be doing, be, you know, squaring the corner up a bit more, but as I get kind of into rhythm, I'll probably be following the suggested line a little bit more uh, as we get into the race. But, um, you know, brake, 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 brake. You know, the line would already be starting to turn into this point. I would take a bit of a later turn in and my preference is, you know, to late apex this one so that as I arc out, I'm pointed kind of straight. You know, I'm trying to get lined up here because I want to, you know, clip the curving on the right side and be pointed because I, I, I diamond the hairpin here, um, the braking for the hairpin. So it, it puts me almost on a straight line down to, uh, down to the next corner. That's what I tend to do or what I prefer to do, we'll see how I do it in the race. Braking for the hairpin is just past the, you know, if you can't see the braking line and assuming nobody's taken the signs out, the the, the pro rata sign there is is a good reference if you can't see, uh, if you can't see the, the braking line. Um, Tree-wise, you've got a big orange tree there, but the signs are easier to spot. And you can also use the, say, hey, if you see the pro rata, signage on the wall go out of view you probably should break 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 now the braking line i think does a wider entry kind of a more traditional wide entry apex exit um i prefer kind of a late late braking diamond the corner so it just i break straight i break straight to the inside line down to third gear and hold it here and try to roll back into the throttle as i get past the camera position and as i start to see the uh the pedestrian bridge um we'll see how well i do with that one that's going to be tire wise the softer your tire the more aggressive you can be on getting back to throttle so don't be afraid like if you're on soft tires in practice play around with how aggressive you can you know roll back into the throttle and kind of muscle the car through and hustle it through there um if you're running traction control obviously it's going to help keep you from spinning the rears up so uh ultimately out of here Bring the car across, going to put the inside curving gear, keep the car to the right. I'm still trying to figure out the best way through here. So the timing for me is as you as you exit the bridge, as you as you exit from underneath the bridge, I'm gonna to start to turn in. I'm still trying to figure out I can't take it flat. At least I haven't been able to yet. And so I think there is gonna be a combination. You don't need to break. Um, but it is a commitment, kind of a high commitment corner. You're going to have so, you're going to have downforce. You're going to have some speed there. You're also going to get a little help. The car's going to compress a bit as it starts to go uphill. So that'll help, you know, that'll help with the grip a little bit. It'll you know, you know, shove some extra weight on the front tires. 
Um, what I think you can do is you can charge in. You can charge in here a bit as you come out from under the bridge, and right as right as the compression starts. It's probably, at least for me on the hard tires, you probably just want to give a little bit of a maintenance, you know, a little bit of a confidence lift to get the tar car turned in and then just start rolling back into the throttle. That's what I'm going to be experimenting with because ultimately you know, it's a quick lift and then roll back in so that you can get the car, the front kind of planted so you can crest the hill on the left side. Ideally, ideally you want to be here as you crest the hill. Maybe at worst, mid track because you need to you want to pull the car back over a little bit for the for the next corner so i like my preference is i like being out a little bit wider uh heading into the next turn i think the braking line says mid track so again you know your mileage may vary what works for you this is the other one where i think for me preference wise as far as consistency wise i don't i don't always charge into this corner I don't do a lot of braking. I only brake if I have to. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll race up here and probably as I get to the patch, maybe a little bit past it, as I start to turn in, I'll be I'll just be off the throttle. I might give it a little brush brake, but you've got this nice uphill, a little bit of compression. You're gonna have race tires. I let gravity do the work through here. So it's down if I'm in sixth gear, I'll drop it to fifth as I crest the hill. And I'm trying to get trying to keep the car to the right side of the track as you crest the hill because when you do get here you're going to feel your steering get light as you crest the hill until it settles in and then we're back to similar to what turn one is uh, you've got this nice long you know right hander that probably about the time that you get here as you cross this patch you should be able to really be committing back to full throttle and again balancing it you know steady steering balance with the throttle you know keep the front end in line through here, fourth, you're probably up to fifth at this point. I'm gonna try and keep the car to the left side. I don't have a definitive turn-in point. This one, this one is, I'm just kind of looking for the inside curving there. And this is where I'm still, this is risk reward here. Um, because you can, you know, track limits are generous. So you can use a lot of the grass here, but it's kind of what I was talking about with Blanchemont with, uh, with, at, at, uh, at Spa. You know, if you wanna, if you wanna go into that left-hander, if you wanna drop your tires on the grass there, you can do that. It's gonna hook the car and the car's gonna, you know, step out a little bit. If you know, if you know to expect it, it it's not one of those, it's not gonna snap the car around, but you will feel the car do that. So just be prepared. Um, but ideally, you know, they've widened this all out. I'm gonna try and get the car now a little bit straighter than that. So I'll use a bit of the inside here my next, my eyes right now are going up to the red tree because you can kind of see just below the red tree, you can kind of just see the next set of curving there on the right side and then just past that, then that tree kind of marks where the last part of the curving is for this, for this chicane. So I get that red tree in line, it helps line me up, bring the car back across, I'm gonna cross over here and maybe cross over here a little bit, but maybe just kiss the tires to keep the car on the left side. If you do it right, you should be able to do it flat. Heading into the downhill, this one I have not been able to do, you know, because it's you're kind of cresting the hill to start going downhill. Um, this the front does get a little light. I, I've been finding that I have to do a bit of a lift uh, to get the car turned in, but then I can roll back into the throttle. I'm sixth gear at this point uh, for the gearing I'm running. You know, I might shift it up here to seven, um, or you can depending on your gearing, you might be able to shift to seventh as you get out of the corner. Um, but it is, you know, gravity is your friend. I'd rather be in seventh and have the full rev range than to start this downhill high up in sixth. So I think shifting to seventh or shifting whatever your top gear is, you know, your, your higher gear as you start heading down the hill. Um, but again, for me, it is a little bit of a lift to get the car in, roll back out, roll back into the throttle and exit. And then we're heading down the hill. and. I don't have anything I can really offer you. This is just pucker up. It is, I can do it with the, with the setup I'm running on hard tires, I can do this flat. So if I can do it flat on hard tires, you should be able to do it on mediums and softs as well. Um, the only guys I'm not sure who I can help if you're still using a controller, you have a little bit more of a difficult time of it because you've only really got one shot to get the to get your controller, your stick moving to get the car into the corner. So, you know, good luck. But 
you know, again, as you're coming down, usually what I'm trying to look for in other cars where we've had to brake is I kind of look for the, these last two uh, Pro Auto boards on the left side. You've got the black set and the white set just beyond it. Um, I try to get my eyes on that to make sure that I'm over to the left, but then I'm trying to get my eyes on the inside curbing. And ideally it's just keep your keep your steering smooth. We'll see, you know, as I get into the race and run lap over lap, I'll try and keep track of exactly where I'm starting to turn in. But if you do it right, you do want to turn the car in, try to kiss, if you're gonna kiss the curbing, kiss it late. Don't, don't aim, if you aim for the middle, you risk running into the wall. I would say aim for the aim for the end of the curbing if you want to get tires on it. That should then put you out straight out here to hit this curbing here, and then you're back on the front straight. Uh, you're going to be at least for the setup I'm running. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm not sure. I, I think I've got the gearing right in seventh gear. I might I might lengthen it a couple of ticks just to give me the run out. Uh, and that's that's a lap of Maple Valley. Um, Again, it's we're running, we're, we're covering this three mile course in less, you know, in a, in a minute, 21 seconds or a minute. That's really darn fast. Um, so we'll, I think the key to this race is just going to be staying out of trouble, just focusing on your lap, you know, use good judgment, make high percentage passes. And I think it's mostly about just waiting, you know, you know, waiting for guys to make mistakes in front of them and mind the gap and take advantage of it. You don't want to be so close that you get it caught up in it, but you know, you don't want to be too far back that you can't take advantage, but I'm talking too much. So let's get out of here. Let's actually go run the mock race. Let's go exit. We're going to quit because I want to reset this up. And all right. So how many laps are we doing? Ooh, quite a bit. All right. To set up the mock race, let's go ahead and set up. And we'll just run it. Oh, wait, which one? Darn it, Forza. There we go. They're all at level 50. All right, so we're going to go circuit race. Uh, I'm not going to worry about. Yeah. So Maple Valley full. We are going to run. five laps it's it's a lot of laps but again it's going to go really really fast so starting time of day random time progression rolling 24 times oh, no 24 mostly clear we'll go random we don't want rain dynamic track rubber on at 50 percent driver to the guilty eight driver signs on all the driver tires even though they are slow and break where they break where they shouldn't Hmm, excuse me, that was rude. Uh, cars, it's fine. Rules, expert rules. Now we're gonna go custom. Ghost back parkers, no. Fuel and tires only. Full penalty, I'm gonna go moderate penalty. Rewind is off, no disqualification. Standing start, random grid order. No roll off delay, no end of race timer because I'm the only one that would trip it. Mandatory pit stops one. And that should do it. Now, my I was experimenting with trying to run the rate. <laughs> I'm sorry, Forza. I know I told the you random weather, Maple but night, night in the rain. No. It was a northeastern racing secret until a major refurbishment in 2000, when it quickly attracted world-class motorsport events. Uh, fictional history. Let's go uh, event setup. Uh, no, uh, starting time of day. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. We'll leave. We'll leave it at sunrise. But uh, oop, no rolling. No thunderstorms. No, 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 no. Reroll the weather. Looming clouds. I'll take that. Looming clouds. Okay. Um, the, in the spa race, I was playing around with the thought of 
if it was possible to and again i'm just i'm always trying to experiment with 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 bop you know with with the bop settings to try and you know level the playing field as best as possible one thought i had was if if i could consistently get it where it's like i'll go in i'll do the quick stop pit but i won't change tires so i go back out you know technically yes it's a faster pit stop because i'm just refueling but i would be going back out on worn tires that potentially at least if I did my calculation right at Spa, you know, by the end of the race, I'd be almost at 30% front wear, which if, you know, remembering back to old Forza days, there would be some dag, there would be some grip loss at the front. Um, but unfortunately, it's kind of inconsistent. Um, I, I played with it in between, uh, in between streams. And uh, so I just, if there was a way that I knew that like, if I do this, it will work, um, then I probably would try it, but, um, but not. So we'll just do what I normally do. 100% hard, compound tires, and then refill uh, during the pit stop. So let's go done. And enough talking. Let's let's race 25 laps at at Maple Valley. Uh, kind of starting me in the back. Um, I am going to I'm going to go way wide in turn one. And drop to the back and then work my way forward just because again I want why do you put me in fourth gear uh, all right so I'm just gonna go wide here but you guys all go to the inside try not to go off the track come on go by me and I go off the track so yeah don't go off the track you get no help why it started me in fourth. Alright, so... Okay, so Forza, turn 10. Please work on your driver tires at the start. I, I, I understand checking up a little bit, but it shouldn't be quite this ridiculous. I'm looking inside. Again, kind of where it goes red. You don't have to brake there. Just get off the get off the throttle to turn in, and then roll back in. Yeah, roll back in as you crest the hill. Okay, just give some space. Find the gap. Go for the gap. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, so if I'm on the way on the inside there, I've got to break a little bit sooner so that I don't push wide. It's me! See, that's the danger. Like you can see how the car went wide because uh, it breaks in a straight line and the, and the tracks went straight there. So I got to work on. I got to relearn my braking for that turn. He's probably gonna break here. Yeah. Hello. Hey, we. I'm on your inside. A little bit of check brake to keep it on the inside. Push wide. All right, let's see how big of a run we get in the one. Okay, 
and Greenwald's drive guitar. Okay, pick it up. Tree. A little bit. That might be the alternative line. Eventually, I'll probably be breaking on the suggested line. front end started to push. So I was just giving a little bit of break. That was really close to the wall. The, uh, the the suggested line, you know, kind of does it as this one big arc, and double apex it. But we've got downforce, we've got grippy tires. You know, I think it's one of those cases where shortening the distance is more beneficial than trying to follow the line exactly. Yeah, okay, so if I stay. If I break just to the right of the line, that will probably, just to the right, no, just to the left, just to the left of the line, keep the line on the right. Okay, a little bit of a break, because I'm not sure, again, never sure what the driver tires are going to do. Please don't check up. Yeah, and they break a little bit earlier for one, but a little bit more breaking than I thought. Starting to follow the line on the way out. Big penalty. Total time penalty is about two seconds. Give me that draft. Yeah, I might. Well, I don't know. It's not a long enough front straight. Where I think I need to lengthen seventh gear. And even if I'm banging the rubber mud a little bit in the draft, it's again it's not a long front straight before we have to start breaking. I'm really committing back to the throttle of that last uh, blue uh, signage board. Let's 
see if I can do this without getting a time penalty. That's better. Okay, well, why don't you race with us on Thursdays anymore? Yeah, I gotta find a better braking uh, reference if I'm on the inside. people that don't race with us anymore. Oh, all right, fine, I deserve that. You heard that. Oh, that was cool. I don't know if I've ever heard that. The car went under the bridge just as I went over the bridge. I don't recall hearing that kind of thing uh, in the previous games, or else I just wasn't paying attention. A little, little, little break to get the front plane in. Oh, come on. So the red tree on the right side there is a good reference as far as turn in as that's going out of view. There's also for turn one, kind of where I was saying where the wall kind of moves out at the end. You can also see there's a little bit of a dark patch on the uh, on the asphalt. Um, but again, it's like that's nice and visible during the daytime, but it won't be at night. We'll probably be racing into sunset. Just 
take a little extra break since I was in the middle of the track. A little bit late there. to the inside a little bit, but still just make sure I get my braking done right. A little bit of a draft. Green tree, turn in. Red tree. percentage pass to try and oh I thought I was hitting the wall. I thought I was hitting the inside wall with that. Uh oh. Looks like we got a little bit of trapper. needs to work on how their drive guitars work through traffic. to give it a little brush break just to help the, the car to turn in but, but again once I get on the hill if I've done it right I just like rather to do the work for you well, we got a big run on Skiwi Pit some at some point, I think. So, how about we just go ahead and pit on this thing? Blue flag versus blue flag. Oh, push, 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 push. Give it a little bit more of a break just because of the car in front of me. Alright, pit lane entry. I think one of the best things Forza did. Actually, I'll let you buy. I'll let you buy. Just come on to the final corner. Just get immediately over the right and straight in. Uh, it could have been a little better on the pit entry, but traffic. So I would say, just because if you're in traffic, just communicate that you know you're that you're uh, that you're going to go into the pit entry. So I would almost rather you rather take the racing line as you start coming down the hill 
and then bring it across and, and, and fire it into the pits. Um, you just want to make sure that if there's somebody close behind you that they don't try to get on your inside and prevent you from, uh, from making that crossover. Uh, pit exit's also really nice as well. Um, it does kind of put you right out the right side. Um, again, if you're on track, you see someone coming out of the pits, just, you know, stay out of the pit lane line. If you can skip that, have it on your hot, on your, on your hot laps, then shouldn't be any, any merge issues uh, with people coming out of the pits. Okay. Brush brake might be needed, just very light getting into that uphill. I'm still experimenting with lines there. The front just pushes there. Turned them a little too early. That only turned in too early there. in the inside of that corner, you can get 
get the you can get the back end to step out a little bit. So just be mindful of that. Gloves have to hit. It's been a nice little. It's nice having a car that's decently quick to chase out in front of me. And there he goes. Trail breaketh a little too much of him. You know, I'm in the effect, the, effectively in the lead because the first and stack second still have to have to make their pit. Another one, I almost clobbered the wall. Setting sun, much harder to see the chicane at the top of the hill there. <laughs> I turned in too early. It's like it's I I'm, I gotta be a little bit later on. I was not expecting that. Dark 
work here on the back stretch and I'm making no mistakes. early uh, 20 seconds up on true second place so I need to push Darker. in there a little too quick.
<sighs> I think uh, it'd be interesting to see if we actually race this at night because I get the feeling that final corner in the dark is a lot more treacherous uh, than the daytime. But that's uh, that's Maple Valley. Um, again, it really it's just about maintaining momentum and consistency. Um, if you can do those two things and 25 laps, it's right in that in the in the race window. So. Um, Hope you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you on Thursday. Some good good tracks this week, I think. Uh, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely should be some good racing. But anyhow, I'm talking too much again. So hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy the Formula One race. Um, if you follow IndyCar, enjoy uh, the, uh, the Million Dollar Challenge race at Thermal tomorrow morning. So have a great weekend, guys. See you on Thursday. Happy racing. Oh, I got to see. Wait, I got to do the whole podium thing. You know? Still have to fix my driver gear, but you know, it is what it is. All right, happy racing. <laughs>